Clay Ferrosi, Republican candidate for governor, on board tonight. The Dan York State of Mind program is brought to you at part by Lookout Rhode Island and Taco Comfort Solutions. He is the former uh, big wig at Alex Sinani and quite a success story. He's had um, interesting uh, challenges since. He's run a provocative gubernatorial campaign, and I say that in a in a, uh, a, a respectful but also confused sense. I, I keep asking, uh, when is this thing going to launch? And it doesn't just doesn't feel like it's launching. Um, he's got a formula, he says, that, you know, simple-minded guys like me just don't understand. So we've got to figure this out with Giovanni Ferrosi uh, tonight. Anyway, glad to have you aboard. Program note, Larry Lacchino, uh, the boss of the Paw Sox, along with Dan Ray, his vice president general manager, will be here tomorrow night to uh, continue the Irish wake, I guess, as the Paw Sox get set to... Uh, to head up to Worcester. We'll talk about the challenges of the next two years, what really happened, and uh, all of that tomorrow night here on, on the program. So there you go. So uh, John McCain is just somebody, it's almost like the Fonzie not being able to say wrong. Uh, uh, Donald Trump just couldn't seem to do it right, right? Here's a headline that comes, uh, there's some reporting, uh, tells us that there was a full statement that the White House had prepared on the passing of John McCain and it never went out. Of course, we got tidbits uh, late yesterday. Here's the latest of the network on that. For almost two days, President Trump's only comment on the passing of Senator John McCain was a two-sentence tweet expressing condolences to his family. What, why won't you say anything about John McCain? On Monday morning, Mr. Trump ignored reporters' questions about the Arizona Republican, who was often at odds with his administration. For much of the day, flags atop the White House stood at full staff having been returned to their normal position less than 48 hours after McCain's death. Veterans groups like the American Legion expressed disappointment. The man was a, a veteran, a war hero, a prisoner of war. And then to diss him like they did. The president then ordered the flags to be flown at half staff until the senator is buried. Last night at a White House dinner for evangelical leaders, Mr. Trump made his first public statement on McCain. We uh, very much appreciate everything that Senator McCain has done for our country. The formal memorials for Senator McCain will begin tomorrow when his body lies in state at the Arizona State Capitol. Look, I mean, there are people who have very strong feelings about John McCain. Uh, they didn't like him very much. And there's a First Amendment right and a constitutional privilege to say or think whatever you want about public officials. Uh, but Donald Trump is staring through reporters yesterday when asked, in an environment where he's inclined to riff, just staring through them and Mike Pence, the vice president, sitting there next to him uh, as if he had nothing to say about it was a real, you know, this whole thing called optics, you know, I know how strong the base is for Donald Trump, but that's a gut check. That one's a gut check. And uh, whether you think John McCain deserved political accolades or not, most people who even think he was uh, a bad actor in the Senate, and when I say bad actor, listen, behind the scenes is the reality. You know, what you see on television and what you see on the cable world is a whole nother ballgame. I mean, I, 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 I have people in Washington who tell me that he was um, a very hard person to deal with and condescending uh, on a pretty consistent level. Uh, so the popular persona and the behind the scenes persona can be very, very different. But nobody disputes, nobody disputes his military um, service and his courage through that PLW five and a half years. Uh, for the president not to be able to spit that up reflected poorly on the presidency and not flying the, the flag at half staff until more or less coerced to do so. Um, represents a, a lack of knowledge about what the White House is. It's the people's house, you know, not just the place he sleeps at night. Anyway, uh, I think that one's going to hurt him long run. A couple of percentage points off the base? I don't know how to project it. I've, I've stopped guessing. Anyway, uh, coming home on this 195 thing, uh, yesterday was, <laughs> you would have never known we ever had a problem with 195 yesterday. He was like the Audubon. <laughs> it's like, what? Okay, so now they're going to add a fifth lane to 195 West, 
which means they're going to borrow a lane from 195 East when it's necessary and just scrunch everybody over. And the work is going to get done over a slightly, quote, slightly longer period of time. So anyway, the, uh, the, the, the director, as we said yesterday, Peter Alvidi, was, was, had come to Jesus in terms of the economics of this. You know, it's not just the cost of the project, but it's the cost of the economy. And it's, all of a sudden, he had been oriented to the entire model of, <laughs> of the economics of people's lives, jobs, cost of doing business, and all that comparable to the taxpayer investment. So I was just wonderfully pleased that he had finally, you know, found Jesus on all of this. But I was asking yesterday, and maybe some of the reporters took a little, uh, a little hint from me, uh, can we see this data, or as we say in Rhode Island, the data, on, on how all this mistake happened? Listen to these answers. We are a very data-driven organization. Uh, the data that we were provided told us that uh, there would be a certain traffic outcome. It did not. That happens sometimes in this business. Uh, this was one of those instances. Uh, our team reacted quickly to it, got it back to normalized as we are now, and as we move forward, I've got confidence that they'll put a plan in place that will uh, create some moderate impact, but not the levels that we were seeing before. Just to be clear, that data you keep referring to, mm -hmm. is that data provided by this third party that we were just mentioning? Yes, so the, our consultants always provide engineering studies and reports. The, the data is part of those reports. Oh, that same consultant going to study the traffic for the changes, the upcoming project? We're, we're taking a more active participation in that, our traffic engineers at DOT. Okay. What about future projects with that same consultant? Is anything in jeopardy? They have any current bids or anything like that? I don't. I don't know that that's the case. Who is a consultant? We'll I'm I, not sure. I'd rather. I'd rather have our uh, comms people get you that information. I okay. Let me see if I get this right. It was like the debacle of of, of recent note. He continues to ask, answer questions about this whole thing, and he still can't, off the top of his head or tip of his tongue, and tell you who the consultant is, and and. Listen, the press has got to be, you know, good probe, but now you got, we got to demand the data and the consultant. And, the, and we need to know, you know, where, where, where the responsibility lies and whether or not we're going to engage that organization or the people inside DOT uh, in the same way going forward. I mean, the nonchalance is unbelievable. And the nonchalance is what costs us. I, I have no doubt in my mind about that. Never mind... Um, the occasional cockiness about, hey, if you want bridges fixed, you're going to have to suffer with it. Oh, I'm sorry, that was last week's Peter Albini. This week is, you know, big economic model. All right. Anyway, just crazy stuff. And lastly, the House Speaker uh, has himself a race in District 15. Remember, he beat Steve Frias by 87 votes last time. Now Steve Frias, the Republican, has uh, put this mailer out into the community that says, we struggle to pay for college Mattiella's staff got it for free. This is coughing up the Target 12 investigation on Frank Montanaro uh, with three years of free college tuition while making over 150 grand. I'm quoting from the flyer. Uh, this was a, this was quite the to do. Go back to WPRI.com and take a look at this at this investigation. Uh, Frias is, is pulling out all the stops, and I understand the speaker is not too pleased that he has to deal with this one, uh, including this check facsimile which is made out from the Department of Revenue uh, to Montanero Jr. for tuition for that amount uh, paid for by the Cranston taxpayer, uh, which is really not exactly true. It would be the Rhode Island taxpayer, but uh, uh, things are getting hot and heavy in District 15. It's going to be quite the race. Here was his announcement months ago, and here he is today. Thoughts on any of the stuff that we just discussed, by the way, since a lot of them cross into the political domain? That would be a, com a, a welcome, by the way. Good to see you. Thanks for having me. Giovanni Ferrosi, of course. Um, you've opined about process in terms of highway execution and, and the like. Any take over the idea that the DOT director still can't figure out who the consultant is that gave him all the information that caused the place to back up for a week? Well, sure. I mean, uh, you know, I know based on experience, the first thing you need to do is always, you know, get out in front of stories and, and any issues that you have. So, you know, right now, all I can say is what I've always said. Uh, it's about decision-making processes, understanding people's skill sets, where do they get it, how do they implement it, who else can go along with it. 
I just came from a you know a private sector meeting uh, on my way here, and to have you know someone in the other party who, in my case, you know had military decision making processes back in the '80s. He was a came out of the Corps of Engineers. You know, having him say lingo that I understood or others made the made the meeting uh, you know really prosperous. It, it was uh, it was effective because we were speaking the same language. So I'm not sure how. A lot of her team has been selected, other than what I can guess, which is you know a lot of political favors. Uh, but I don't know that one kind of put together. What are the skill sets that we can all move with to effectively move you know on big decisions? All right. When we come back, uh, probably the last visit before the primary, we'll see what the candidates got for you when we return. Stay with us. Giovanni Ferrosi, candidate for governor, Republican Party. So. Uh, blockchain technology has been a theme. We've had a couple of conversations here and many on the radio about it. Other than that, what connects you to the voter? What is their, what's their thing? What, what's, what's, what are they supposed to know about you? The future. I mean, most people, even today, I mean, if when I wake up in the morning, the first messages I get from people I either don't know or haven't seen in a long time are pretty clear. It's the same one. Uh, keep fighting the fight. Uh, one guy says, you know, I do this for a living, and I see every day people moving out of Rhode Island. And so just keep doing it. Stay on message. And, um, and I'm willing to do that. I'm willing to stay on the message to create a future for Rhode Island. You have to understand what you're building before you go get the team to build it and then actually build it. So we keep going year after year. It's a popularity contest. We continue to do it this year. I mean, I don't care if it's Joe Trillo's yacht or chicken suits running around or just goofy, goofy, goofy dialogue that would just never make it to professional level discourse. It just it wouldn't be there. What's an example of goofy dialogue? Simple. Just, uh, you know, calling people names. Not ordering, uh, you know, or excuse me, not showing the people of Rhode Island what an end state looks like. So if we were, you know, going into business or if we were going um, into whatever uh, new new thing we want to do. We have to first understand what we want to build, right? You have to put it together and then, then we make the moves to build that. And so that's what I've done. I've said, hey, you know, might be boring, uh, might not be the, 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 you know, sexiest thing at the moment, but I know it's the right thing. And I know that I've said, listen, we need Rhode Island to look like this. Stop saying we can't look like that. I mean, look, you know, like we, we talked in the past about Delaware, Financial Services Act, what that became. But look at other areas. Sioux City uh, became the capital for Citibank because of actions that Delaware took. You know, all things that transformed economies. You know, I, I spoke earlier of a meeting I just came with. These are guys who, you know, were there when Atari was built, you know. So it was actually cool to, to meet people who played with code uh, to the old games that, uh, you know, we played as kids. Uh, but to have that level of talent, you know, as 50-year-olds, you know, bringing that experience in and understanding, okay, so what do you want to do? Okay, we'll build it this way. Um, all of that, you know, I know when it comes to the voter, bottom line is this. The people who want to bring down the dialogue, and you might not agree with me on this, the people who want to bring that dialogue down who just want to talk about the other uh, candidates, fight, call people names, do all that, you know, crash and burn campaigning, that's not me, it never will be. If uh, you either bring your resume, I'll bring mine, you bring my experiences, you bring yours, and say, okay, what, does the people, uh, what do the people of Rhode Island really want right now? Do they want a leader? And then I can't ignore experience. I mean, I looked at, you know, Bruce Sullivan, it took him three times, whatever. When he got, became a governor, he made the changes. I mean, do you think anyone other than Bruce Sullivan would have reduced the size of that General Assembly? Would have put term limits on general officers? Think of the big actions, built an airport, build a Providence Place Mall, it took leadership. You go back and I look at my experience compared to his, I'm like, oh my God, this guy's a titan and a half, you know, getting shot down in World War II, crossing enemy lines, going back. But it makes sense afterward when you look at what he did for Rhode Island. You see, of course it took that kind of leader. And then there are the other candidates, you know. The other candidates, I'm not here to knock them. I really don't. Listen, I'm not going to say Joe Trillo's not a smart guy. Of course, why not? Of course, he has had a lot of success. 
is he the visionary? Is he, in other words, does he know what Rhode Island is supposed to look like 25 years from now? I mean, come on, let's be honest. Yeah, well, this is, I, mean, I, I get your point of view. There's two things I heard right there. One, uh, it took Sunland a few times. Sure. And two, you're talking about a guy that you're not running against yet. We'll talk about whether you're in this really to win when we come back. Stay with us. So update me on your organizational effort here. You are, uh, you, you talked about you know, a very confident, high confidence level about getting a certain amount of votes out uh, organizationally, on the ground work. And you, and you hinted, more than hinted, that post the August 15th filing deadline for campaign finance reports, that's when you would make your investment. Correct. Um, I've yet to see any material evidence of an investment. Mm -hmm. So answer that question first, if you would. Uh, are you putting any money into this campaign? Or have you raised any money for this campaign? So I raise, significance? I raise money. Um, level of effort comes two ways. So it's organization on the ground, as you said, and then the level of the media buy and what media you're choosing to buy. Are you making a media buy? So I believe I am. And the three packages that I've identified, um, again, they'll either happen or not next week and it's all managing the campaign day to day. What does that mean they'll happen or they're not? What do you mean? Very it's, simple. It's, I've it's identified a best, a best, better, good situation. Yeah. And you have to make uh, business decisions, right? Do you deploy them or you don't? Do you make the buy or don't you? Do people invest in you or they don't? So we'll know come next week what either you're going to see a barrage of ads or you don't. It's very simple. Yeah, so I'm asking a simple question. Are you making the buy next week or not? I just told you I will make the buy according to what I feel is the scenario that's best suited for the campaign next week. You, you do know the primary is in two weeks. I do. I, I, do. I don't mean to be facetious, but I've, no, I, I, I know, I've but just, it goes to show you, me got, again. You're a guy that's got so much um, um, innate talent. You've proven mm -hmm. that before. Uh, you're not hesitant to talk about it, yet you do nothing but pull punches or, 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 or play psych games over this whole not thing. Not at all. You're either making a buy next week or no. you're not. No, the, the, the reality is this is where, again, we talk about the level of experience, okay? The level of experience is that you make a decision every morning when you wake up, okay? So every morning at United States Central Command, you wake up, you have course of action one, two, and three. Course of action one can become course of action two depending on the circumstances the next morning. So I'm managing a war. So it just, it really, I mean, I, I try and be respectful every single time. I understand. But just, just I, I understand. That, I, I wouldn't. Not I've smart. never, never it's suggested crazy. you haven't been respectful. Never suggested you haven't been respectful. But I think there's at some juncture you're reaching into my undies and yanking them right through my neck, just not like everybody else. Not at all. It's it's like it's like a political wedgie. I can't get a straight answer. Well, what if what if the answer I wanted, right? And I'm going to say this just because I think it's important for the for the viewers to understand, okay? Because I do think you impact the campaign like others that impact. Hmm. That you want to impact this campaign. But I'm going to I'm going to go no, ahead no, and give I it. want to do the best I okay, can to so flush if, out the candidates. Okay, so I have no horse in this race as a voter. I might make a decision. Example. So let me give you but an example. But that's the way I work. Let me give you an example. These are the questions I would ask anybody of what you're asking and what you'll get out of me right now, right? Which is something I did not want to put out. But let's just say I want to put it out right now. Mm -hmm. What if my thing is I want you to wake up on September 5th and all of a sudden Ferrosi raised the most money in the last reporting period? What are you going to say? What are you going to say? Whoa, and then I got the last bang for the buck, as opposed to stringing that out over the course of five months, I won't right? recognize that you spent a lot of dough no, on September but, but, 5th. I'll recognize it that you spent it. What do you mean? That's if you a headline in the newspaper. The, the point of the matter, what? But what if that's my tactic? What are you going to say, When is right? the primary? Time out. When, September when, 12th yeah. is the primary. So we have to report again on certain days, mm -hmm. right? So every single time you're raising cash or you're doing certain things, you're going to have effects of that, right? People write stories, people do that, whatever, whatever's going to come out. What if every time I'm looking at it, I'm saying, you know what, do I grab three grand tomorrow or do I keep pushing it, pushing it, pushing it? And the decision points for me could be one of two. They could be one of, did I cross 50, 100, did I cross what I wanted to cross? 50 and or 100 I, what? Grand. If I want to pull that trigger for a minute, if I pull that trigger, will it give me my headline of Ferrosi outraised Fung and Morgan? 
That's the headline going into the primary week. Or let's say I don't get there. And then my question is, do I want to just go raise 25 grand or raise 25 grand or okay. 50 or whatever? So that's a decision point, Dan. You might not like my decision points. You might say, air your campaign strategy in the public for everybody to, 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 to play with no, you and make decisions that, you know, with like, you. you know, I, but that's not games. I, 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 that's actual we've, strategy. I've, I've been around for a while, you know, yeah. Joe, and, I, and, I, and I, 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 your, your candidacy has been unique. But it's not so uh, existential that I that I can't try to drag you down to some base answers for some basic questions. Right. And that is, are you raising money or not? You know, and how are you getting 15 plus thousand votes out stealth on a geo get out the vote effort? I mean, these are the kind of things you think are tactically secret stuff. I'm like, listen, let's talk about this guy Mike Napolitano. He put out a tweet yesterday. Can we show sure. that, Kev? Uh, suggesting that you try to hire him, and your message to him was, you could do, you know, as you work for me, you don't talk about, uh, you don't make negative comments about Ellen Fung. Um, I get that you want a Republican to win this race, but 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 I, you know, I said it on the radio the other day, and I'm going to say it again. This mm -hmm. feels like a stalking horse uh, strategic effort between you and Alan Fung. That's Every non-Alan Fung vote is a determinant in the Republican primary it goes either to Pat Morgan or to you. Mm -hmm. Alan Fung has polling data I know that shows Pat Morgan a little stronger than he's comfortable with. To have you in this race, this, you know, I, 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 I'm tr this whole thing just reeks of either you started this way or in the transition during this race, you decided that you wanted to be in another place in the result. Yeah. I, I haven't, for a guy who knows how to compete as well as you do and has had success as much as you've had, you're not running this thing. To, you're not going to convince me you're running this thing to win. You're well, not. Let me, let, me, let me explain my position right now. you got now. a minute left. Go ahead. Well, I'll do it quick then. Reality is I do not run crash and burn campaigns. I did not quit the Republican Party. Joe Trillo quit the Republican Party. There were four of us that were supposed to win. I did not quit the win, convention. Run, win, I, I run, the run, run, excuse run, me. Yes. There, there were uh, three of us going into the convention. I did not quit the party convention. Pat Morgan quit the party convention. Okay, I went through that process. I'm continuing to run. You're actually suggesting that doing it the right way is the wrong way. That's exactly what came out of your mouth. It's unimaginable to me that two quitters, Joe Trillo and Pat Morgan, okay, are the ones that are actually getting the buy by you, as opposed to someone who has had success in the past, who's put his you know what on the line gotten beat up every day along the way Trillo's, a dis knows, Trillo's decision to go to I, run independent is his I, he says he thought short, the number the thing was fixed well, well what you're suggesting look, that I, I mean, that, that you're, you're you're putting thoughts in my in, in, no, in my mind or in my mouth that that, that, that aren't uh, those candidates you, you're the same guy who says you don't want you don't want to uh, you know attack not, other I'm candidates the right way look the bottom line is uh, we'll see in the next two weeks you I'm know, a Republican. Wh whether you put it in or you don't put it in, or whether you raise it or whether you get the vote out one way or the that, other. That's true. I'm a Republican. I want to be the Republican nominee, and I'm going to support the Republican nominee if it's me or anybody else mm. because I'm a Republican. I'm not in it to just run for me. I'm in it to run for the state of Rhode Island. Mm. And you bet that I'm not going to do a crash and burn campaign. All right. That's not what I asked, but yeah. I appreciate you being here. Well, I appreciate your time. All right. Follow Thank William. you. We come back. Time will tell. Time will tell. When we uh, convene tomorrow night, Larry Lacchino and Dan Ray from the Paw Sox will join us. They've got an interesting challenge. They're headed north, but they've got to see if they can sustain some cash flow for the next couple of years. We'll figure out exactly how that formula is going to work. We'll see you on the radio at 3 tomorrow on WPRO. Till 6 each day. Thanks for watching.